Our top story, not only local, but with repercussions ringing halfway around the globe. An international fugitive from Thailand seeking refuge right here in his hometown, South Florida. Now, tense negotiations underway between Washington and Bangkok, and a lot of money, even a man's life, on the line in this case. A bizarre mix of kidnap, ransom, and the death penalty. Sean Shaw is his name, and his story starts out two years ago with what he calls a business deal gone wrong. Shaw says he's the victim in this case, but officials in Thailand, they disagree. They say Shaw captured and kidnapped another U.S. citizen in Thailand and tried to hold him for $3 million ransom. That money was supposed to be paid to Shaw after he returned to the U.S., but when he got back, that money never came. The 43-year-old from Palm Beach says the man in question was actually a pedophile and that he was the one threatening Shaw's life if Shaw was to go public with those allegations. Now, federal investigators tried to track Shaw down for two years, but struggled to locate him as they've described him as living off the grid. Authorities finally caught up to him in Palm Beach, and that's where he's been in jail, awaiting a judge's ruling about possible extradition back to Thailand. Now, if the judge ships this case overseas, the defense attorneys believe Shaw could wind up facing the death penalty. Now, due process strained by diplomatic pressure. We'll update you as we learn more, an extradition hearing set for March 7. In other news, an election campaign in a small town. Political correctness, nowhere to be found. Now, the town in an uproar over a letter full of racial insults. It's a small island town of Manalapin, home to less than 500 people. But after a confrontation back on Halloween, a concerned mother sent out several letters to her neighbors. Leanne Elder says she sent those letters out trying to raise awareness for racial profiling. Now, she and her family are part of just 16 black residents living in that small town, and she says a man followed them through the neighborhood on Halloween night, continuing to harass them and ask them questions. Why were you in the neighborhood? But when she went to her mailbox earlier this year, she says she found a return letter from hers inside racist insults. It said, I was unaware any black people lived in Manalapin, and accordingly, upon reading your letter, I will be selling my house. I had assumed any black people I had seen were the hired help and did not actually live there. Obviously, repulsive statements in that letter. The town leaders traced the anonymous letter and found it did actually go right through the Postal Service, but they do not know who wrote the letter. Now, the town assigned extra police patrols to watch their home just for safety and did complete a thorough cr criminal investigation, but found no evidence of an actual crime. With not much left to do, the man here, Mayor David Chifetz, addressed the entire town in a town hall meeting, addressed that letter, and denounced racism of any kind. Other news out of Boynton Beach. That police officer accused of raping a woman at gunpoint will be held without bail. Palm Beach County Circuit Judge Samantha Fuhr rules against the fired officer. 35-year-old Stephen Morino will fight the case in a trial. Now, his defense attorneys insist the act was consensual, but the DNA evidence putting Mayor Reno with the victim and the victim inside the police car, they are not denying that he did have sex with her while he was on the job. Mayor Reno is an eight-year veteran of the Boynton uh, Beach PD, a husband and father of two. The trial date is not yet scheduled. It's also a big day for fugitive hunters in South Florida, obviously. U.S. Marshals got their guy, this time in a Palm Beach County hotel. What better place to run than South Florida, am I right? This is another two-year-old case, but now the end could be in sight. A man the feds considered one of the most intelligent fugitives they've ever sought. Now he's behind bars. Tommy Thompson's his name. He evaded authorities ever since his arrest warrant served back in 2012. The man is under arrest now for making off with $50 million in bars and coins made of pure gold. Since then, Thompson and his girlfriend paid cash for their ritzy hotel using a fake name and got around town in taxis and buses, living, again, off the grid. Thompson made headlines in the late 80s when he discovered the shipwrecked SS Central America at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. It was a big story back then, but investors had actually inv uh, funded the entire project, fording nearly $13 million to Thompson in order to find and locate that ship. Those investors never got their money back, and that sparked the entire case. We've heard a lot in recent days about legalizing medical marijuana. Now, if that day ever comes, one nurse in Miami might be considered a pioneer, a woman before her time. But for now, she's headed to jail. Wanda Tonk sits in a jail cell. Just hours ago, she was treating patients at Jackson Memorial Hospital. Tonk traded in her nurse scrubs for an orange jumpsuit 
After earlier this week, police raided her home and arrested Tong, her husband, and the entire family, all three of their children. Now, police say the family was using several rooms inside that home to grow medical marijuana. Officers also claimed they found cocaine in the home and that Oren Tong admitted to selling marijuana to sick patients, something that is still against the law in Florida, at least for the time being. Now, since then, the judge has released those three children, but their parents still in jail and their future very much uncertain. The court has not yet scheduled a trial date.